Hello, welcome to the fifth annual Open Lens Regional Film Festival, and we're really fortunate this year to have with us Ms. Joanna Priestley, animator extraordinaire, and uh, she's visiting from Portland, and she's been um, kind and generous enough to talk with us about the process of her animation and about some of the things that she thinks are most important about animation, the um, new technological possibilities of animation, and um, giving a lot of encouragement to people who want to start doing animation uh, in this new, uh, brave new age of animation. So, uh, Joanna, what, um, what things do you think are most important to a successful animated short? Well, there are lots of elements that go into it, but I think that if you start with, with some passion and you um, you develop a story or, or some sort of content that you're really interested in and really passionate about, mm -hmm. then that can sustain you through the making of any film. Because it takes some time and some energy and some money. So do something that you really care about, something that you love, um, and that should come out in the, through the process. Are there certain themes that you think work especially well for animation that are particular to animation, um, as opposed to, say, live action feature length films or is it pretty much anything goes? You know, there are some things that are distinct to animation. Um, I think, for example, there's a whole genre of animation of abstract film uh -huh. that um, you see less of in, in live action um, that's been going on since the 30s. There's films from the 30s, 40s, 50s and on um, that are abstract. But the things that I think work really well, well say for first time filmmakers, I personally like um, subjects that, that come from the filmmaker's background. Mm -hmm. There's a film by Carolyn and Andy London that I showed at Open Lens that's about um, Andy's experience um, in his childhood of wearing a back brace. Mm -hmm. And those films, you know, subject, subjects that are really personal, I think those work really well in animation. Uh -huh. What are some of the themes that you chosen to use, whether they're really personal or, or not, um, that you think either you return to all the time or you think have worked really well for you as a filmmaker? Well, I was influenced by Norman McLaren, the great Canadian filmmaker, animator, um, that worked with the National Film Board of Canada, and he worked with lots of different styles of film. So I've worked in lots of different styles and genres mm -hmm. as well. But the one that just came to mind when you said that was a film that I did with my friend John Gratz about prison. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's got an interview with a corrections officer and then an interview with an inmate from the Oregon State Penitentiary. And that film, I still love, really love that film because it's, it's, um, it's got a whole depth of emotion. Mm -hmm. And it covers an interesting topic that you don't normally see in animation. Mm -hmm. And it's, in a way, kind of an anima animated documentary. That's kind of a small genre in animation that I love, mm -hmm. animated documentary. That's an interesting thing people could look into. Yeah, um, it's it's for me. It's really it's really interesting to see the very few examples I've seen of an animated documentary because in a documentary you tend to to sort of put yourself in the nonfiction mode and your 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 imagination tends to kind of shut itself down. Sometimes you're used to thinking that this is you know this is OPD time, so we're going to sit and learn. Uh, but with those animated documentaries, it's really fanciful what the, the filmmakers have done. You know, it seems inspired. Well, you know, we're seeing that in um, like regular feature-length documentary. We're uh -huh. seeing filmmakers put in um, lots of sections of animation that bring a lot of variety and um, experimentation and innovation to their film. I saw a film about corn. Uh, and the filmmaker loved animation, and it was mostly a regular documentary that featured his grandfather. But um, he inserted all these these sections in the film where he was animating corn kernel corn kernels, or you know, animating uh, farm implements. It was really made the film much more interesting, I thought. And in this sort of example, it seems like the filmmaker can say something much more profound about a very simple, I mean, seemingly sort of banal thing, right? I mean, some of the things I've seen in, of animated documentaries, it seems like you get so much more insight, um, whether it's you know the, the subject or the filmmakers into what that 
thing means that symbol of corn might mean kind of on 